Hey everybody, Mr. Dave here. I am really excited to welcome you to the 2021 Northeast Puppet Con and the really cool, super awesome puppet filming workshop. My name is Mr. Dave, and I'm a puppeteer, puppet builder, musician, voice actor, filmmaker, and I run Bowtie Studios. Bowtie Studios does music and film production, multi-camera, live stream, and recorded events, and works hand-in-hand -hand with professional and amateur musicians, actors, puppeteers, and schools to create all kinds of media. I am also the creator, writer, puppeteer, and human star of the internationally viewed family show, Fun Time with Mr. Dave. Me and a few of my friends are going to spend some time showing you how to get the most of your puppet filming. Uh, don't forget the disclaimer! Thanks, Percy! My esteemed dragon friend has reminded me to tell you that this is by no means the be-all and end-all of puppet filming. This is just a collection of ideas and suggestions based on my film education and experience. My hope is that this workshop will help you make the best puppet film ever. Let's get started. Scripts. Not all puppet films require a script. Reaction-based comedy, improv shows, and live children's entertainment are some examples of things that don't need one. However, that being said, scripts are a filmmaker's best friend. This is the one I'm using for this production right now. Not only does this remind me what to say and do as the talent, but it also helps me keep track of what I have and haven't filmed. Once I film a take, previewed it, and deemed it worthy of using, I cross it out with my handy-dandy pencil. That way I know what I've already filmed and what I still need to film. There's nothing more annoying than thinking you've got all your shots, than realizing after hours of editing that you've missed a three sentence sequence that's imperative to the story. Trust me. Even if the show you're filming doesn't have a script, you can make a loose outline of what happens in the show and that can help too. Anything that can help keep track of what you need to shoot or have shot will make your life that much easier. Now you certainly can use a digital script and find a way of marking off things as you go that way. However, I'm old fashioned and I like to use a printout and a pencil. Your batteries never run out on a number two HP. Cameras and monitors. Hello, my name is Percival and I'm here to go over camera types and monitors. I'm not gonna go into the technical specifications or pros and cons of one kind or another. That's being taken care of by my friend Melissa at her workshop. My job is to show you how to get the most out of what you have already. Now, most of you probably already have one of these. Cell phones are great because you can write a script, film, edit, and post entire productions on them. The best part for puppeteers is the built-in monitor system called the selfie cam. Using the selfie cam on your cell phone will allow the puppeteer to see their performance, thus making it easier to stay in frame and keep the puppet's eye line where you need it. The drawback to using this mode to shoot footage is that many cell phone selfie cams are lower quality, and so the resolution, or picture quality, can be lower than most other options. Some ways around this problem are purchasing a monitor that is compatible with your particular phone, prop up a mirror so you can see the reflection of the phone screen, or have a friend act as a camera person. <laughs> hello! A hello, L dude. Now, some of you may have video cameras like digital camcorders, point-and-shoot, or DSLR cameras with video capabilities like this one here. Depending on what your camera has on it dictates what you need to do to make your film the best it can be. Almost all modern camcorders and many digital cameras have these flip screens. If yours does, you have a monitor system that you can use similar to the cell phone selfie cam. The bonus here is that you'll be able to use the best resolution available to you without the need for awkwardly propped mirrors or friends willing to stare at you for hours. <laughs> yeah. Shh. Now, some digital cameras, even super fancy ones, don't have a flip-out screen. Worry not. You can still use these similarly to the methods for the cell phone front-facing camera. A mirror, a friend, or a monitor. The monitor system is a bit easier for digital cameras as long as you have a video output of some kind. Many digital cameras have micro and mini HDMI outputs on them. If that's the case for you, then all you need to do is get a micro or mini HDMI cable adapter and HDMI cable and you can plug your camera into any TV with an HDMI input. Then you can see your performance in full high definition glory. 
No matter what type of camera you use, having some kind of eyes on your performance, whether it be via a monitor or a spare friend, is a great way to make sure your shots are all clean and the puppets stay where you want them. Tripods. The next thing I want to talk about is tripods. Now most of this workshop is about using what you have already and not running out and buying a bunch of stuff. However, if you don't have a tripod, I recommend that you get one. Whether it be a small tabletop one or a big heavy expensive one, just get one. The reason I say this is because, first of all, it gives you a steady, static shot that is both easy to edit smoothly and easy to duplicate if you need to. The most steady of handheld camera operators will still have camera shake and height differences that make editing shots smoothly difficult. Anyone who is not looking specifically for the handheld shaking dynamic needs to invest in a tripod. Here is an example of cell phone footage edited without using a tripod. Now here's the same example using a tripod. As you can see, the tripod version is much smoother and less disruptive to the viewer. Now I'm not saying that handheld shots are bad. They can add a feel of reality and excitement to a shot. It really depends on what emotions you're trying to portray. That being said, tripods can be really helpful there too. I'm outside using my cell phone to shoot a walking sequence. Right now, I'm just holding my cell phone in front of me and walking. Now I'm walking the exact same route, but this time I have the phone in the tripod while the legs are closed up. You'll notice that the footage is much less shaky while still keeping that handheld feel and look. That's because the weight of the tripod is helping keep the phone steady and less prone to the jolts of my footfalls. There are a lot of other options out there to help you with your handheld camera work. Whether it be a cell phone frame that you can use two hands to hold it, these handles that screw right into the bottom of your camera mount. There are even different levels of steady cam armatures that you can buy from a few dollars all the way up to several thousand. These are all great tools, but having a simple tripod can make your life a lot easier. <laughs> camera angles. Hello, me Crump, me Goliath. Me tell you about camera angles. Hey, yeah, he's Crump. My name is JO378, Joe for short. He knows me as Bo. It's kind of a long story. Eh, just watch Fun Time with Mr. Dave and you'll figure it out. My job is to help my linguistically challenged friend here explain about camera angles. Called perspective. Yeah, well, let's get started, eh? Here the camera is pretty much straight on Crump and is far back with a stronger light. This gives him the appearance of being small. Crump small. Yeah. Here, Crump looks big. Big! <laughs> and that's achieved by bringing him closer to the straight on camera and bringing the lighting back a little from normal. Now you can see Crump is closer to the side of the frame and angled inward about 45 degrees. The space in that frame that Crump is looking towards is called lead in space. That makes the audience feel like something is happening in the direction Crump is looking. This works great to set up action or have conversations between characters. Hello, Crump. Oh, hello, Crump. So good to see you. Always make Crump happy to see Crump. Oh, Crump, me blushing. Crump just being honest. <laughs> and that's enough of that. Thanks. Basically, don't be afraid to play around with camera angles and try to give different feel to each shot when your story requires it. Just make sure you keep it in focus. Crump in focus. Lighting. Bo and Crump, Crump is my Dragon Eggs character, mentioned moving lights around. Here's where I'll explain what they were talking about. Lighting can seem like a scary prospect, but when you take it down to its basics, it's not really all that bad. Starting with the simple. Most video blogger kits and cell phone mount kits come with an LED square or ring light like these. These are fairly inexpensive and chances are you may already have one on hand. These are great for close-up cell phone or camera shots, but not really good for any kind of distance shots. This is being shot on my cell phone without any extra lights. The studio lights are off and only the overhead room lights are on. This is with a basic LED light. You can see the image quality is much nicer. However, when I back away like this, it doesn't look quite as nice. Even though it's fairly limited, Having an LED light certainly helps. Now, if you happen to have full studio lighting, chances are you already know how to use them properly. But just in case, here are a few basics. 
This is Ballhead. I made him to help me manually focus the cameras and to check lighting for a subject. He is going to help me illustrate some basic lighting technique that may help you with your next puppet film. This is my basic studio lighting setup. One overhead light above the camera, two main lights that shine almost directly onto the subject, and two fill lights on the set to even out the lighting and reduce shadows. I have these set up to where I personally like the way it lights the set and the subject. There are no real rules per se for this. It's art, so be artistic and see how you like the lighting for your basic shot. The adjustments I'm going to talk about will apply to your setup just as much as they do to mine. Note of interest, you don't need all these lights. The technique will work with a single front light too. Look what happens when I move the main light closer to ball head. He's getting a lot brighter, and because he's a ball, there's a lot of shine and reflection starting to happen. This is great if you want to draw attention to the subject, or create an aura of intelligence, or a feeling of heat, or simply mimic a very bright place like a desert. Now let's see what happens when I move the lights further back. Now Ballhead is much darker, his appearance isn't as crisp, and if he had facial features, you would notice that they have become harder to define. This is useful if you want to give the subject an air of mystery or an evil vibe. It also works well to mimic dark places like caves, or even differentiate night from day. And here are a few lighting faux pas that you should watch out for. Right now, I am backlit. While this can be used as a cool effect for things like introducing a new character or an after image of a fiery death, it's not so pleasant for just regular dialogue. It's hard to see me, and after a few moments, it gets quite uncomfortable to look at. And one more thing I want to mention is sunlight. If you're shooting outside, sunlight is usually really good and can be mostly controlled with a well-placed shade. But inside, sunlight is a menace. Sunlight is a stronger light than any of the lights you can buy for film and will cut through your controlled lighting. The best thing to do is film in a room with no windows or blackout curtains if you can. Or film after the sun has set. Again, these are all just suggestions and ideas, and how you light your subject is really up to how you want it to look. Audio. Thanks, Puppet Me. No problem. The next thing I want to go over is sound. Now, sound is an entire workshop all on its own. But luckily, my friend Scott has got that covered. First, let me say that most digital cameras and cell phones have pretty good microphones nowadays and sound pretty good as long as you're up close. If you're looking to beef up your sound quality, there are a ton of options for mics for your phone or camera. Here are a few humble suggestions from me. If you're filming a single subject and want to cut ambient noise, or the subject needs to be a bit farther away, a shotgun or mini shotgun mic is your best bet. These are unidirectional mics that pick up sound mostly right in front of them and not so much off to the sides. The mini shotgun can plug directly into the headphone jack of your cell or the mic input jack on many digital cameras. If you're looking to get a clear room sound, an omnidirectional microphone is your best bet. This condenser microphone isn't for a camera, but it's an example of a mic that is omnidirectional and will pick up all around it. Next, I want to talk a little bit about sound effects and Foley. A little bit can go a long way. Adding the sound of footsteps to a puppet character walking, or the sound of a door opening and closing as a character enters or leaves a room can add another level of realism to your audience. There are tons of free sound libraries out there on the internet that you can use at no cost. Or you can make your own. This is called Foley. Foley is creating a sound for something filmed to either replace or enhance the film sound using something that isn't the thing you're hearing. A simple example I use all the time is footsteps. I don't record my feet to make puppet footsteps. I record myself slapping my chest. After tweaking the EQ a bit, I get realistic sounding feet for all my footless puppets. If you have the capability to record fully, it can be a lot of fun and add a lot to your film too. The last thing I want to mention in the audio category is soundtrack. Background music to be precise. You've heard through this entire workshop little bits of music to help the flow of the production and add to the interest. Everything you've heard has been written and recorded by me, but most editing software on phones have libraries of free music, and there are several online sources as well. Having a bit of music that fits the mood for your scene will make it that much better. Don't be afraid to add some tunes. Just make sure it isn't copywritten music that you need to pay rights to use. 
or then you can, at best, get your videos removed from the internet, at worst, have legal action by the publishers and artists. Editing. The last thing we'll talk about today is editing. You can have the best lighting, amazing camera work with brilliant sound, but if you edit it together poorly, the whole project can be ruined. A great example of this is Star Wars. George Lucas's first cut was horrendous, and a new editor came in and recut the film, and now it is cinema royalty, but it was almost a complete failure. Editing is a whole year of classes to teach you how to do it, and then a lifetime of doing it to find your style. I'm not going to be able to teach you how to do it well today. And I also have no idea what software you're using and on what system, so sadly, that will be mostly up to you. What I can do is tell you a few things to avoid most of the time. When you're editing shots together, you want to make sure that there are no changes on or around the subject between cuts. This distracts the audience and will detract from your film. This is called continuity. You want to try and keep everything as similar as possible. Next up with editing, less is usually more. Unless you're going for a specific feel of discomfort, fear, confusion, or trying to mimic 1990s teen programming, editing the camera shots a lot, or adding in unrelated effects and graphics, is very distracting and can make your film seem amateurish. Eldun. Eldun! They get the point. Sorry about that. It's okay. Thanks for the help. Okay. I'll just... I'll just head out now, then? Yeah, sure. I got it from here. Thanks again. Okay, no problem. See ya! Hmm. <laughs> that was some good Foley feet sound there. <laughs> and at last, take your time. Try not to rush your editing. Stay true to your vision, but don't be afraid to let it breathe and grow as you put it together. Remember, it's art, and art always has a life of its own. It's time to say goodbye. Thank you so much for joining me and my friends at the really cool, super awesome puppet filming workshop. I hope you can use this and you can make really cool, super awesome puppet films with your puppet friends. See y'all next time. Did I write? I don't even remember what I wrote now. That's why I have the script. Whew. So I can remember what I wrote, because I don't remember what I wrote. Come on, there we go. Ah, drawbacks to paper. Hard to turn the pages. I hope to... There, <laughs> God. <laughs> okay. Oh.